the tax dollars of people who are listening are paying to put children in the hands of criminals. And I said, look, I said, I need to make you aware. And they said, Tara, we don't get sued by traffickers. A government whistleblower with the Council of Inspectors General on Integrity and Efficiency has stepped forward to Project Veritas to detail her harrowing experience assisting with the placement of unaccompanied migrant children to the Department of Health and Human Services. In 2021, this whistleblower volunteered to assist HHS with the placement of unaccompanied minors and was deployed to the Migrant Emergency Intake Site in Pomona, California. There, she witnessed the agency failing these children, as she puts it, doing the work of the cartels on your tax dollars. These vulnerable children, we care for them, we clothe them, we feed them. With your dollars and my dollars, we fly that product directly to the trafficker. God forbid it's sex trafficking. Project Veritas embarked on a nine-month investigation across the country to corroborate our whistleblower's claims. So he attempted to traffic children and he's still at address in Texas. Yes, we have 44 unaccompanied children at that address. We have 25 unaccompanied children at that address. Project Veritas put boots on the ground, visiting scores of addresses the whistleblower shared from case files she worked on. What we found was shocking. Young children living with multiple older, unrelated men. And in one case from Gulf Freeway in Houston, Texas, a young girl who admits to her female sponsor using her for sex work. ¿Quién te patrocinó a ti? Una tía, pero me corrió en la casa. Bueno, no sé por qué ella me ofrecía. Y a mí no me gustaba eso. ¿Te ofrecía qué? Me ofrecía con los hombres. Pues. Pero ella, ¿cuántos hombres ella te obligó a estar? ¿Con cuántos hombres? Bueno, con muchos. Ni por, porque no me gustaba lo que me hacía. Me obligaba. ¿Ella de verdad fue, era tu tía? ¿O fue sí. alguien que se... Dice que ella me conocía desde chiquita, pero yo no la conocía. I don't believe that this is something that HHS wants people to know. So tell me about your experience in the federal government. So I've been a federal employee for over 19 years. I'm a GS-14. I work for the Council of the Inspectors General on Integrity and Efficiency. We combat fraud, waste, and abuse in federal programs. I've seen that there are large numbers of children who are being sent to the same location in some areas within a few square miles. There are over 300 unaccompanied children who have been released. It's just strange that HHS knows there's a lot of children going to one area, and yet they're not doing anything to say there's going to be a mandatory home study before we send one more child here. One of the things that has occurred in this administration is that they have relaxed a lot of the stringent vetting by creating these additional field guidances. And there's a focus on move the children as opposed to place children in safe homes. Right now, it is speed over safety. Move the children 10 to 15 days. I am holding Field Guidance 10 from HHS, which was enacted in March 2021. This guideline pushes expedited release of unaccompanied children to sponsors, according to our whistleblower, within 14 days after processing. And what sorts of fraud have you witnessed? Uh, name fraud, legal document fraud? So we had some cases, uh, it's specifically in Austin, where a sponsor was attempting to simultaneously sponsor two unaccompanied children. In one application, said his address was at one location, and then for the next child, he used a different address of a neighboring apartment building. Mm. So same person sponsoring at two separate addresses. And who's he? Um, so the sponsor here, mm. Edgar. ¿Cómo se llama usted? Yo me llamo Edgar. Edgar, ¿qué? Sí, Edgar 
Edgar Tiul. Tiul, oh, mucho gusto, Edgar. Sí. ¿Eres de Guatemala? Sí. Ah, mucho gusto. ¿Y cuándo llegaste aquí a Estados Unidos? Mm, un año. ¿Cuántos adultos hay aquí? ¿Cinco, seis? Aquí estamos, aquí estamos o sea, como cinco. ¿Como cinco? Sí. ¿Todos hombres? Sí, hombres. ¿Y algún niño? No. ¿En algún momento has patrocinado a algún niño, Edgar? No. Ninguno. Ninguno. So he attempted to traffic children and he's still at address in Texas walking a free man. Yes, HHS does not want federal law enforcement going after their sponsors in any way. Why not? It's a very good question that I don't have the answer to. Our sponsors typically are not citizens. They are not permanent residents. They don't have legal presence. If you look at the data on the HHS website, a majority of the children who are coming across the border unaccompanied are from Guatemala. Why is that? Well, I believe they're easier to exploit. ¿Cuál es tu apellido? Um, uh, no, no sabe. ¿Cuántos años tienes? ¿Ah? No sé. ¿Tu papi está? No, no se puede. ¿Y dónde está tu mami? También vive aquí, ¿quién más? Who lives here? Only six. Now. Only six? Ah. Y la niña y cuatro adultos. Uh -huh. Okay, the little one and four. Cuatro hombres, ¿verdad? Sí. Four men. ¿De dónde eres? Guatemala. Anto Guatemala. ¿La niña está sola en el apartamento? No. ¿Con quién? ¿Con su papi? No, están unos muchachos. ¿Cuántos, cuántos viven en tu casa? Seis. ¿Todos hombres? ¿Y dónde está tu mami? Anda en Guatemala. ¿Lo dejaron pasar o qué pasó? Lo dejaron pasar. These sponsors fill out a federal form. So if they provide false information on federal documentation, that also is criminal. We don't know if the U.S. Attorney's Office in Texas knows about this. Right. They probably don't. I think most people don't know. They have no idea that children are going to unrelated people. That children are definitely, we have proof, evidence, that they're being recruited and transported, they're then in debt bondage. We know that children have been trafficked through the program. And the name of this program again is? It's the Unaccompanied Children program, so the UC program. Ella de verdad fue, era tu tía o fue alguien que se prestó? Es, pero tú la conocías a ella de Guatemala, no. ¿Y cómo tú supiste de? Dice que ella me conocía desde chiquita, pero yo no la conocía. So your trafficker in Guatemala, he's got to use the cartel to get his children across Mexico. But once he gets the children to the US border, we take them. So we take the product. These, these vulnerable children, we care for them, we clothe them, we feed them. And then with your dollars and my dollars and the dollars of every person watching, we fly that product directly to the trafficker. The trafficker then has the ability to labor traffic that child until they're caught, if they ever are. And, and the, God forbid it's sex trafficking. ¿Quién te patrocinó a ti? Tía, pero me corrió en la casa. Eh, mírame a mí, mírame. ¿Qué me dijiste? ¿Te corrió? ¿Por qué? Bueno, de porque ella me ofrecía. Y a mí no me gustaba eso. ¿Te ofrecía qué? Me ofrecía con los hombres. ¿Cuánto tiempo duraste viviendo con tu tía? Creo que cuatro meses. Cuatro meses nada más. Pero ella, ¿cuántos hombres ella te obligó a estar con cuántos hombres? Bueno, con muchos. Yo ni puedo. ¿Te obligaba a estar con los hombres? Sí. ¿Ella lo hacía en su casa o ellos te llevaban a otro lugar? No, en su casa. Porque no me gustaba lo que me hacía. Me obligaban. 
And once the children are gone to the sponsor, there's nothing that we can do about it. There's nothing that HHS can do. We give the child to the sponsor. I said, do you think the child is going to take the sponsor to their immigration hearing? And they're like, probably not. And I'm like, no, probably not. So hence, the child gets an order of deportation and that's it. I mean, their chance to get their papers are, are gone. So they've been harmed. But why is that beneficial to the sponsor? And I say, case manager, think with me, who gets the order of deportation? The sponsor. What happens? The sponsor can hold up that order of deportation to that child and say, this is your order of deportation. If you do not do what I say, when I say, mm -hmm. I'm going to call ICE on you myself. We are paying to put children in the hands of criminals. One day a case manager, she came running up to me and she said, Tara, we're sending another child to Austin. And I said, what do you mean? So I picked up all my stuff. I go running down to the command center to mm -hmm. talk to the executives there. I said, we're getting ready to send an another child. And they said, Tara, I think you need to understand that we only get sued if we keep kids in care too long. We don't get sued by traffickers. Are you clear? We don't get sued by traffickers. So that was the answer of the United States federal government. HHS did not want this information to get out. They knew I had made protected disclosures and they retaliated against me as a whistleblower and had me kicked off the site so that I could no longer research the cases. If you're a case manager and you know this information, if you work for HHS, come forward. It's the only way the program is going to change. Stay tuned for part two, where we take our investigation from Texas to Florida and reveal more of the harsh reality of our whistleblower's story.